Everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, I want to talk to you guys about pinching. I want to do a nice little walkthrough. And I want to show you guys the results of our pinching. We did our, our pinching, the majority of it, um, actually quite recently, about 12 days ago. Today is June 12th. And on June 1st, we went through this row here and this row over here, and we pinched the large majority of those branches that we could. Um, and I want to show you guys, again, just how it all worked out. We did this last year. By the way, we, we talked about pinching, why you should do it. We talked about a lot about the technique. Um, and then we showed you guys the results. So this is year two now of showing you guys the results of how this works. Because there's still naysayers out there. I don't really understand it. Uh, pinching 100% induces fruits. And here's, a, here's proof. I'm gonna try not to speak a whole lot in this video. Um, I do want to mention, however, that uh, we are going to do a live stream, or we did a live stream on Fruit Talk, our podcast that we do every Wednesday night at 9 o'clock Eastern. And for those of you guys who tune into that, thank you. Uh, but what I want to mention is that on our last episode here, we did a, um, a whole review on pinching. And I'm sure it took us a couple hours. We did a Q&A at the end. Um, and we're going to talk just the whole breakdown on pinching, every little detail about why this works, not just in cold climates or short season climates, but also in, in warm season climates. I do want to touch on that really quickly as we go through here and show you guys these trees here. But you can see the missing tip right here. You formed a new tip and now there's fruit all up and down these branches. Uh, that was uh, Coldedon Blanca. Actually, that was Galicia Negra. Here's Coldedon Blanca Negra. Again, the tip's missing over here. And the fruit has formed. Here is our Italian 258. Missing growth point here. Formed figs. These guys were formed actually early in the, uh, in the greenhouse. And we pinched these guys, I think, sometime in May. And now you can see the progression here a further progression of what I'm going to show you guys a bit later in this in this video. Here's Socorro Black, missing tip, <clears throat> four fruits on this branch. And if I come in here and show you guys over here what these guys look like, missing tip that's now forming a new growth point. And then here's the new figs really all up and down this branch. It's a pretty productive, pretty productive branch here. Um, what I want to mention here before we continue about the, about doing this in a warmer climate is that it's very simple if you think about it in terms of, um, living in a warm place, you're going to have lots of growth after you pinch. So let's take this variety here as an example. Uh, we had pinched it here, right there, and then it formed this new shoot up here, and then it formed another shoot down here. And it's been growing now for about a couple weeks. Um, once it puts out enough growth, I come in here and I pinch it again. So what a lot of people do, and this has actually been scientifically proven that this will increase your yields <laughs> in a warmer climate specifically, is that if you come in here and you pinch this, you get a nice crop of fruits. Well, I only have two on this particular branch that we've done this. And then it will continue to resume growth. And once it resumes growth, you then pinch it again, or you don't even have to pinch out the, uh, the second growth here, and you'll get a second crop of figs. You'll get a nice set that's earlier. It's been recommended to do this at five to 10 leaves in the scientific study that I, uh, I looked at. In fact, if you go into the episode of Fruit Talk that we talked about, you can see the scientific study there for yourself. We talk all about it. And then, of course, once you get that first crop of figs, whether that's on the, you know, the fifth leaf or the tenth leaf, that's five or ten leaves per limb, or five or ten fruits per limb, then it continues to grow, as you can see here. And you can let this continue. You don't have to pinch it again. You could pinch it again. But that's then going to give you a second crop of main. Um, and you're going to essentially increase your yields, too, because then you're creating new branches, more branches. The more branches you have in a warmer climate, well, the more fruit you're going to get. Uh, it's pretty simple. 
here's my cold en blanc. You can see some fruits have formed down here. Missing tip. <clears throat> we also have things like uh, my Cavalieri back in here. Most of these that we're looking at have been receiving some sort of head start in the greenhouse. You can see my black Madeira missing the tip and it's forming fruits. This is black Madeira UC Davis. We have a, a lot of figs over there, really close node spacing, tons of fruit in a really small area. That's called Mega Celeste. Again, given, given to me, um, given a head start, I should say. You can see this variety down here. Uh, this one we didn't actually pinch. And what we had done is we pinched the branches on the mother plant. This is a variety here called Sweet Joy. And this is a Franken fig. So there's four varieties onto this particular, in this particular pot here, 10 gallon size pot. So we had done is we pinched the, the mother plant here, the mother variety formed figs. You can very obviously see that. Not the most productive variety, I have to say. But then that triggered other portions of the tree. Also over here on Strawberry Verte. And again, on this variety over here, Figo Sifenio Oscuro, I think is this one here. And this one here is Scora Vavatsika. And uh, yeah, so we, it, you know, pinching has different effects, whether that's on the branches you wanted to form the fruit on, or if you had pinched a different branch, um, it can trigger the, entri the entire tree into fruiting. Uh, all right, now let's show you guys some of the varieties that did not get a head start here. But here's another good example of, we let this grow out in the greenhouse, kind of simulating what would be a warmer season climate, getting them awake in, in uh, sometime in March. It then grew, it put out about 10 leaves, we pinched it, put out some nice fruit, and now it's resuming growth. And it resumed growth again and I decided to pinch it because, well, our season's just not long enough. But in your California or Arizona climate, you could certainly let these shoots grow. And you're gonna get more shoots this way. Look, here's not just one new shoot, but two. On this tree over here, or on this limb over here that I showed you guys, it wasn't just one, two, but three and four new limbs that I then was able to pinch, except for this fourth one down here. So you're getting new limbs, you're getting more, more growth, more shoots, more figs. It's very simple. All right, let's go across now and show you guys. These are the varieties that we pinched just only 12 days ago. Um, this is here, I think, uh, this is Neruciola de Elba, if I'm not mistaken. You can see fruits forming here, missing tip. Here is Moscatel Preto, same thing. There's quite a few fruits on this tree, by the way. Seems like a very productive variety. Same thing with Suwati, removing the tip. <clears throat> and there's a whole lot of fruit here, guys. Uh, this, one, this thing's not only covered in every node, but there is also some doubles. Um, there's a double on the back here. You can see that right there. There's also a double over here, and there's a double right here. And there's a double over here. So uh, this variety is very productive for especially the age and the size. Um, the nutrients worked out well with those, you know? It really is a, depends on a lot. Here is Violette de Bordeaux. No tip, 12 days later. Actually, this one we pinched more recently. Some of these I decided to let them go a little bit longer because I wanted to make sure that this fruit was gonna form. And if the buds are not progressed enough, um, you're just not guaranteed fruit. Whereas the, the, you know, the, the uh, limbs back here, which were more vigorous, stronger at that point in the season on June 1st, you can see the fruits are forming here all up and down the limbs with the missing tips. Um, here is a English brown turkey called Sunbird Unknown. You can see we did that as well. Here's a Breba. You know, it really depends uh, how far along the main crop already is. Here's Rasty Persian Unknown. So the main crop has to already be there. Yeah, I'm not creating fruit out of thin air. We're just increasing the speed at which these fruits are forming. And we are triggering the tree. We're triggering the plant and saying, hey, it's time to fruit. 
you know, get your act together here. Some varieties, however, didn't work out. And this is a good example. This is, um, well, I guess it's not too, it's maybe too soon to say, but this is a variety called Chater Green. Uh, some varieties just take a couple years, guys, before you can pinch them. And um, this one seems to be like that, although I could be getting a fig back in here. It's really tough to say. But so far, across the board, we're just getting new leaves, just getting new branches. And it's very difficult to tell. You know, you really need a magnifying glass to see both of these nodes when they're really small. You know, you either, either need really good eyes, very closely inspect it, um, because you're not always gonna look and see two nodes. You may only see one. And if there's only one, again, you're only gonna get, um, you're only gonna get new leaves. Here's a variety here. This is a hardy Chicago type. Tip missing, new tip forming. You can see the fruit actually has quite progressed. I think we may have pinched this one in late May rather than June 1st. But across the board, I mean, I'm sure you guys are getting it at this point here. Here's Dr. Gawadi, which we did the first video on, the first pinching video of 2019. It, we pinched it here, it then grew a new shoot, and I pinched it again. And you can see all up and down the branch below it are the fruits. And again, I'd rather have earlier fruits than more fruits of lesser quality. Here we go, missing tip. This variety here is called um, Fico Gentil. And you can see this one's actually really quite covered in fruit. That one did really well this year. I don't know why specifically. Here's some that we didn't pinch. Again, um, these were trees that we got in the head, it, greenhouse head start. We did end up taking off the growth here and here on this variety specifically to help get this limb here, this variety to grow. This thing will not grow. Uh, it really is a bit of a shame. But you can see that the heat is triggering these guys into fruiting very early. And as a result, they don't really grow all that much. And then they put out a crap ton of fruit right away. And um, it's almost a bit of a detriment in terms of production. You know, if things are too hot too soon on specific varieties, you're going to get earlier fruits, but you're not going to get the uh, production that you want. Here's Valle Calda. This is another... Um, Violet de Bordeaux type, you can see the Brabus over here. And I, on specific varieties, I really do believe that pinching will almost abort the Braba in certain situations, certain varieties. Here, we're missing the tip here on Plint Nero. You can see this is a double fig here. Another double fig back here. This is a double fig. Um, you know, it's just loaded. This variety is loaded with fruit, but will it ripen? That's another story. Here we go. This is one is called Spey. This is an Israeli fig. We don't, uh, pinching doesn't care where the fig is from, guys. All right, let's continue over here. Let's go through the middle because I'm almost certain that uh, we want to look at these more than the others on the outside here. Here's another variety. This is really looking quite productive. Uh, what variety is this? Let me go down here and get the tag. Ah, Pendolino Rosso. So again, who knows if it's going to ripen. Um, you know, some of these varieties could be Smyrna that need pollination. I don't know just yet. Here's another one here, missing the tip. Formed a new growth point and all up and down that limb. This one as well. There's fruit everywhere here, guys. Um, this is a pretty <laughs> damn jam-packed space here with figs that, uh, you know, if I turn around, some of these have gotten a nice head start in the greenhouse that are really far ahead. They're looking quite productive. I mean, look at this, look at that variety, you know? Here's some back in here. Um, across the board, these fruits are really productive, I guess, for the space that they're in.
Although, you know, I'd rather have an in-ground tree instead of all these potted trees. Pinch the tip. Fruit's forming down here. Same thing with this variety. You can see a really small fig right there. And there's some also along the, uh, the branches. Down in here as well. On this variety. It goes on, guys. <clears throat> who's, who's still not convinced? <laughs> God, they're just, I think they're trolls at this point. We looked at this variety already from the other side. This one didn't fruit for me. This is uh, Osborne Prolific. And certain varieties, guys, just take longer to mature. I didn't really, we sort of touched on it in this video, but uh, things like your Adriatics, your Col de Doms, your Black Mission types, Osborne Prolific, they just take a number of years really to mature. Um, here's a variety in here that we did very recently. Look at this cluster of fruits back here. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. Also back in here, this variety really didn't put out a lot of growth. It just put out a lot of fruit all on all of its limbs. You can see we pinched it here and the, the fruits have not formed just yet, but you can see that they will. If I zoom in, you can see the double node action going on here. That's what you're looking for. That's more progressed, actually, than these were about 12 days ago. So, you know, uh, they must have been even more dormant and even more, even smaller along the branch. And as every day goes by, these get larger and larger and they become more visible. You know, for those of you guys who can't see very well. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think we're going to end this video here, guys. I think you guys sort of get the point. Um, you know, this is also, I guess, one little video to just show you guys the production that I'm getting on some of these varieties. You know, these are Brava down there and the main crop above. Um, but yeah, I would really strongly suggest if you guys are still not convinced or maybe um, you want to hear more about this process, watch our prior episode of Fruit Talk. It really did explain quite a bit um, I really broke it down well and I just want to thank everyone here for watching and supporting my channel um, I hope this technique works out good for you guys and I hope you guys have a good fig season because mine is looking pretty good and assuming we don't have much rain in August I'm gonna have a fantastic year alright guys take care we'll catch you all soon see you for tomorrow's video